two for today because Miami has some issues that they need to address. But is it too late? What is up, Finn fans? How many of you guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, when I start these videos, do you say that in your head? <laughs> I've been doing this for six years. Some of you have been following me for six years. How many of you, when I say, what's up, Finn fans? Boop. It's <laughs> just playing. Even if you're driving, you're probably like, what's up, Doug? What's up, Doug? So I got to tell you a quick funny story. Somebody sent me a, a DM. I got to make sure. Peyton McCowan uh, sent me a DM Saturday night, late Saturday night, uh, of I think his boss or somebody. He had me on his TV and he was interacting, talking to me. It was the funniest thing I've seen in a very long time. So. Peyton, thank you so much for that. But anyway, today we are going to talk, and I do need to fix the fact that my camera tracks me. I do apologize for that. Probably gives you some motion sickness when I move. Uh, I will fix that. There's some things that we need to address and we need to fix, and is it too late? But before we jump into that, I do have to shout out a few people because you guys are awesome. I love you all. Yes. Uh, we got some new patrons and some new members. On the Patreon side, we have TJ, William Garcia, Joel Mendoza, and CryptocurrencyAttorney.com. I feel like that was uh, an advertisement, but hey, they're a, mem they're, they're a patron, so they technically pay for it. Um, go over there, check it out. You got videos to catch up on i also got videos coming out for the patreon so go over and check that out then we have the members we have space josh josh all cooks is that do you cook i'm hungry uh zach k for ronnie my man and surfish and nandanan thank you guys so much for joining the patreon and the membership if you would like to join the membership it is the join button next to the subscribe button you get cool perks like if you're on the live stream uh for the falcons preseason game you see people have different icons they could put different um emojis up and stuff you get all these cool perks you also get special videos and all this stuff and on the patreon side it's a link in the description told you guys you get special videos and i'm going to do some live streams where only, i'm gonna have you guys come on kind of like a call in type thing but just for the patrons and the members i got all that in the works anyway i've been rambling on for about three minutes let's jump into this and talk about it so we're gonna go into the pressing thing i have two things that the dolphins kind of need to address uh let's start with the thing that i think everyone's talking about there's a rumor going not a rumor but there's things there's something that people want to happen now we watched the preseason game and on friday friday and uh the backup quarterbacks were bad skylar thompson threw an ugly interception i understand his arm got hit but even if his arm didn't get hit there was three defenders around the receiver he was trying to throw the ball to so it was bad uh his accuracy was off he kind of held the ball he's he's still in that mindset and that funk that he was in 2022 and here's the thing this is now his what second year third year in the same offense he shouldn't be going through these growing pains still where he is holding the ball a little too long, kind of second-guessing himself. If you remember that first year he was with Miami, he was slinging the rock in the preseason game. He was not doing well uh, Friday. And then you had Mike White who came in, and he didn't do any better. So, you know, God forbid, and I'm going to keep on knocking on this wood, if we ever need to rely on those two gentlemen, I will don't know. And I've been talking about Mike White for a while, and I feel bad because I feel like I kind of you know pick on him a little bit. But I, I, when free agency came, I was like they should move on from Mike White. They should go get like a Garner Minshew. They should go out and get some type of backup quarterback that fits this offense, um, because Mike White just he's not it. 
And, you know, I went on Reason's panel and me and Alan Poupard had a conversation about it. He doesn't think so. I think so. I wonder if Alan is still thinking that Mike White is a viable backup after seeing what he saw on Friday. But I've been talking about this since March that they need to move on from Mike White. It is a $3.5 million cap savings. They are at like $32, $33 million in cap space. So they'll be up to like $36 million. They just need to move on from Mike White. Um, we didn't see anything with him from the, with the Jets. We didn't see anything. Obviously, he didn't get much opportunity last year. Thank God, one more time. Uh, but it's it's just not it's not it. Training camp, it's he wasn't I, like it's just they need to move on, and they need to bring in somebody. God forbid that. Like a Matt Moore. You remember when Tannehill went down with his ACL injury? Matt Moore came in and, you know, we won in Buffalo and, like, he was making the plays he needed to. And he was that, that you know, he wasn't great in practice, but he was great in the game. We need to bring that in. And the, the name that's been thrown around a lot because, for one, it is the only name out there of a quarterback that is that has won because you have names out there. And the names out there are not good. They're not sexy. They're not. They, no. It's Ryan Tannehill. Do the Dolphins move on from Mike White, keep Skylar Thompson, and bring in Ryan Tannehill? Now, I, what was I going to say? Because I have like 500 things running through my head because I know when I said that some of the comments are going to happen. And one of the comments is, that's never going to happen because Tua uh, Tua's ego is too fragile, or Tua, they're afraid of Tua. And that narrative is such, there's so many lazy narratives for the Miami Dolphins quarterback. And that's what I'm going to call him from now on, because that's what he is. He's the Miami Dolphins quarterback. And if you're a fan of the Dolphins, you should want him to be successful. And the amount of people that don't, it just boggles my mind. But the things that this quarterback has been through, first of all, his quarterback, his head coach in college was Nick Saban. If Tua's had a fragile ego and a fragile whatever, he would not have survived having Nick Saban as his quarterback. Then he comes, then he destroys his hip. He fights through that to come into the NFL. Then he deals with Brian Flores not wanting him on the team for two years. If you think he had a fragile ego, he would not be where he is right now. He fought through all. All of it, concussion, all of it, and he's still here, and he got a new contract. So if you think Tua Tungavello has a fragile ego, and if you think they bring in Ryan Tannehill and he's going to be like, whoop, I'm not going to play football now because there's a potential of him beating me out, you don't know what you're talking about because in actuality, he's probably going to play harder and better because now he has even more to prove, kind of like when during free agency, I was like, I wouldn't mind bringing Justin Fields as a backup. You can't do that because it would be a competition and then Tua can't take competition, blah, 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 blah. Or when I talked about um, Milton, I would have drafted Milton in the fifth or sixth. And he actually did pretty decent with the Patriots. Oh, you can't do that, beak, bock, boop. It's just a lazy narrative. But Ryan Tannehill's still out there. To go from Mike White to Ryan Tannehill is a huge upgrade. And I made a point to be so emphatic with saying in huge because Tannehill has shown that you put him in a pinch, he can win you a game. And that was my thing. Go back. I think it was like my second year doing this channel. Go back and see when we traded Ryan Tannehill to the Tennessee Titans. Watch that video. I said, he's not a bad quarterback, but he won't get us where we need to be. And I say he will, he's a type of quarterback that when you, you know, you can have him as a backup or something and you put him in and he can win you games. Well, he's available. And you move on from Mike White, you get $3.5 million in cap space. You could probably bring in Ryan Tannehill for about $5 million with incentives. That's nothing. I'm not against it. I even, who's, I think I was on somebody's channel and they asked me about bringing in Tannehill and I said I wouldn't be against it and then somebody clipped it and and didn't let me you know clip took out the my explanation of it but I would prefer bringing Tannehill over Mike White Mike White is just not a good quarterback 
not even as a backup. That's just my thoughts and opinions. You may disagree. You may think, hey, you know, he was playing with the third and fourth stringers. Yes, but he was playing against third and fourth stringers. If you're a good quarterback, you should be able to carve up the third and fourth stringers with third and fourth stringers. Because to me, technically, he is a third or fourth stringer. But again, I may be too harsh and too critical of Mike White. That's my thoughts. The other thing we need to talk about when it comes to uh, fixing issues is that interior offensive line. So Keon Smith rumored uh, to have torn his ACL. So he's going to be gone. So, you know, the, we lost a kind of a tackle, possible guard. And then you have Aaron Brewer, who has a hand injury. And, in, you know, uh, like I told you guys on Friday uh, in my post game that um, Mike McDaniel came out and said, his day, you know, his day to day, week to week. It's not as serious as people make him out to be. Um, I will say this when Jack Driscoll was the starting center because Liam Meikenberg was not playing. He didn't do bad. The snapping was good. Uh, his blocking in the in you know in the middle was good. Skyler had a ton of time to throw the ball and do things he needed to do, even roll out. Uh, I'm not upset with Driscoll possibly being a backup center. That being said, there is now like a week or so back on Twitter, Big E kind of hinted at something might be a Bruin. And some people were like, what, 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 what? And I even was like, what you talk about, Willis? So then I reached out to somebody that I know that has sources. And I said, what's going on? James Daniels, the guard for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He wants a new contract. And the Pittsburgh Steelers do not want to give, they're not negotiating with him right now. They're going to wait till the season's over. Um, and from what I heard is that Greer, when he heard about this, was intrigued. And I don't know if he made a phone call just seeing like, hey, what would it cost to get him or this, this or that. Uh, I can't see anything more than a fourth to try to, you know, bring in James Daniels. Maybe, you know, fourth and hey, we'll send you Jeff Wilson Jr. You know what I'm saying? Or fifth and we'll send you Jeff Wilson Jr. But he has experience at guard and center and he fits the offense because of his mobility. Think like uh, an Aaron Brewer, but a little bit better when it comes to the pass blocking. Those are two, you know, we have issues right now at backup quarterback and into your offensive line. Outside of that, I I think the defense played really well. I think the receivers did their thing. I love the running backs we have. You fix those two issues, and you easily can by bringing in Ryan Tannehill and trading for James Daniels. All of a sudden, we're Gucci. We're good going into the season. You got Kendall Lamb as a backup tackle. You got uh, Patrick Paul, who played fantastic against the Falcons, as a backup tackle. You bring in James Daniels, and Isaiah Wing comes back, and you have Driscoll, and you have Liam Eikenberg, and then hopefully Aaron Brewer comes back. <laughs> You're good. So can they fix the issues they have now? Yes, very easily. You go out, you get James Daniels, and you sign Ryan Tannehill, and you move on from Mike White. And then everything we're all, you know, about just fades away. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And again, thank you to the new members and the new patrons. I greatly appreciate you guys. I will have a ton of cool content for you soon, and I will have a ton of cool content for you throughout the season. Um, I'm going to have a new intro for the live streams. I think for the videos, I'm just going to have the usual DDW. But I, uh, for the live streams, I'm going to have like a 15. Like, it's not going to be like a minute long intro where you're sitting there like, when is the stream going to start? It's just going to be you know, like a 15, 20 second intro. Just something cool that i usually do uh but other than that i will see you later today they're back at practice today tomorrow and thursday and then they have a joint uh, today tomorrow and wednesday then they have a joint practice thursday with washington and i'm gonna be there i leave wednesday my flight's at 3 30 so i'm going to try to get training camps video in thursday before i leave if not, that that video will be out later in the day when I land in Miami and I am at my Airbnb. But other than that, I'll see you guys later tonight. Like usual, stay classy. Events out.